Hey YouTube, Repo Man 64. Let's see if I can get this thing to move. Blah. All right, so I want to come on here and make a quick video. Um, there's a couple of people that I spoke to today on the phone, and um, we're trying to figure out. They have some good insights, some good information that the rapture might actually occur just before Passover. And as you know, I use the Enoch timeline, which I'm going to show you here in a moment. Um, but there, they had a good argument that uh, this rapture could actually occur sometime around the time that Lazarus resurrected, which I have Nissan 4 or March 20th. And let me show you their names. These two people here. Whoops, there. This is his name. We had a conversation. I got on the phone with them and spoke with them for, I think it was an hour, hour and a half, maybe two hours. I am a whosoever on YouTube. And SOJ <coughs> is her name. And uh, the three of us talked for quite a while. And um, we're all just trying to figure this out. We want to know. Um, it is not a salvational issue to know. Uh, in our voyage to knowing, we have learned so much, like Dr. Barry Awe and his uh, uh, knowing when all the feast days are in their order. And uh, and uh, I've applied, actually, a lot of what Dr. Barry Awe has done to my Enoch timeline, and it's it's pretty incredible. Uh, to watch it all unfold and again it's not a salvational issue but why do we do this it's because Revelation 3.3 3, we're going to keep trying to seek this out you know it's for kings or it's for God to hide a matter for kings to seek them out and that's what we're doing we're trying to seek these things out understand them and um, the the people I spoke to tonight think that there might be a five day warning. I've been saying there'll be a three day warning. Amos three seven promises that he's going to tell each and every single one of us. No one here is special above anyone else. We're not going to appear in heaven uh, looking up there, and Jesus is standing up there with one of us, and he's got his arm around him, going or her, and going, "Ah, oh, this is the one that figured it out," you know not going to happen that way. Um, Amos 3, 7, God's going to tell all of us. And we're going to be very keenly aware of when this is going to happen. <clears throat> if you'll read the three Gospels and then John, you'll realize that they're speaking to different dispensations, different groups of people. And uh, I'll show you a little bit about that tonight. What I spoke about with these two individuals is the time frame between the moment that Lazarus was resurrected and the cross. When did they have that meal with Martha, Mary, and Lazarus? What date did that happen? And they're trying to tie the resurrection of Lazarus to that meal that we'll have with Jesus in heaven. And we believe that there's at least two raptures. We know that there are at least two. We know that there's the bride that goes, and this is a group of people that gets uh, goes to the beam seat. We get the crowns. And um, we uh, get our, uh, like, white robes. And then the next rapture that, that we see, and there, there, and there might be two of them, uh, we see that they have their robes washed in the blood of Christ, and they receive palm branches. And um, so as we try to pick this apart and understand all of this, and a lot of us are working on this, um, we're learning about the Bible. And as we learn about the Bible, this is a deeper, more intimate relationship with our Savior, and that's what this is all about. Um, it's not about figuring out the date or being the one that's got it. It's about this close, intimate relationship we develop with our Lord as we dive deeper in, in, into just surface reading and understanding, oh, I know this, I know that. But when you dive deeper into it, pay very close attention to the words, you start seeing other things unfold in front of your eyes, and it's the Holy Spirit leading you. And that's what uh, I was speaking with these two people about, how the Holy Spirit is leading them to this understanding. And they saw the timeline that I have, and they liked it. And uh, I'm not saying it's right. Like I've said before, I'm not saying the Enoch timeline is accurate 100%. It just seems like to me that it is. So well, let's get into this. 
All right. There are several examples to why we think there might be three. And we miss this every time we read this type of stuff. It says, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. That's one. With the voice of the archangel. That's two. With the trump of God. That's three. We always miss that three things are happening here. Is this referring to three separate raptures? Could there be a pre-tribulation, a mid-tribulation, and a post-tribulation? And then do we all go to heaven? These three groups go to heaven, and uh, the bride receives crowns, and they receive palm branches. Uh, we go to the third heaven, and they go to paradise. And then after that, uh, there's a thousand-year millennium. That's going to happen here as well. It says, yet is there strength, that's one, labor, that's two, sorrow, that's three. So strength would be the bride in Christ. The labor would be those that have to go through halfway through the tribulation. And then sorrow, those who go through the hard part of the tribulation, the third group. They, uh, I think that we would be speaking to the Jews at that point because the Jews are going to recognize after three and a half years that the person they've been following has walked into the temple and claimed himself as God, and they will turn on him. They will realize that they just made a mistake, that this is not their, their uh, how do you call their, 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 their not this is not the, the Jesus that they were looking for. This is not the, the one that they've been seeking. They realize they've just crowned the Antichrist by mistake. These are the two people. Here's where we're looking at, or this is where they're studying, right in here. Um, Enoch dies on New Year's Eve, which is March 16th. And I'll show you how I arrive at that date. New Year's Day is Nissan 1, March 17th. In the first month and the 14th day, in Nisan 14, Jesus goes to the cross. What happened? Lazarus is resurrected on March 20th, which is the equinox. What happened between the resurrection? And we also know very well that the lamb is chosen four days before the Passover. So Jesus rides into town on a donkey, and they throw palm branches and yell, Hosanna in the highest. There's a six-day gap there. That's the gap that uh, th that these two that I was speaking to um, are are uh, they have a dispute with those six days uh, and and, they, and rightfully so because I couldn't quite nail this down so they're working on these six days they're looking for Bible verses and maybe you can help in the comment section we know that at this meal that Jesus is at with Martha Mary and Lazarus we know that at this meal that um he is uh they they you know they're they're preparing him like they they put oil on him we just don't know exactly how long after Lazarus was resurrected we don't know how long the meal was we do know that it took place 6 days before passover so i assigned 6 days to it and assume, assumed that it was uh, the resurrection of Lazarus and then 6 days later he rode into town on a donkey but they're telling me that they don't think so. There's something else in there, and some, the something else that's in there, they believe, is the rapture. They believe the rapture is going to occur after March 20th, but before March 26th. Somewhere in there, that dinner that they're eating is the dinner that the Bible speaks of us eating with Jesus in the sky. Now, I want you to notice those six days right there and those four days. Uh, up until the cross. We know about the donkey, and four days later he rode in. because They always choose the Passover lamb four days before. So let's keep going here. Yes. St. Patrick's Day is always the first day of the year, always on the Enoch timeline. Now, uh, we notice something here. Let me go past this. Here in Luke, and this is another thing they pointed out to me as well, and I've noticed it. Previous to this, let me hit this so you can see. Oops. See everything? Okay. It says, For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. He says this in Luke. 
He says he will not eat again until he does so in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and, and take this and divide it amongst yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. Let's go over here to Mark. Could this be a rapture three and a half years later? Verily, I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until that day I drink it new in the kingdom of God. You notice there's no meal. He's talking about eating up here, but he does not talk about not eating the meal until they turn, uh, until they come to heaven. It only says that in Luke. It says he will not eat this meal again, so this is the dinner that's going to happen, the celebration is going to happen. Could this be the same celebration that... Uh, these two I was speaking to be of when the example of Lazarus at the resurrection, after he was resurrected. Again, here in Matthew, same thing. He says he will not drink until he's in, you know, and, and here it says something a little bit different. It says, but I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. Okay, this is the same in my father's kingdom. In the kingdom of God, in my Father's kingdom. Is my Father's kingdom speaking of the kingdom here on earth as Jesus rules? I don't know. This is the kingdom of God. This is the kingdom of God. This is my Father's kingdom. It's very interesting uh, differences of words there. I wanted to show you this. I found this on time and date, and I found it curious that on April the 1st is the new moon which means it was dark on March the 30th, which is when the Enoch timeline says Jesus went to the cross. And it'll still be dark the day after this. There'll be three days of where you can't see the moon, the day before, the day of, and the day after. You won't see this moon until April the 2nd or 3rd. So I noticed something here. It says it's the illumination 1228. And I've been trying to figure out what that means. They count them for some reason here on time and date. I don't know where that number comes from. But when I go to here to try to figure it out, you see down here in purple, trust the process. That's what it says, trust the process. The problem with the zodiac and stuff like that is people get confused between astrology and astronomy. There's a huge difference between the two. We're to look at the sun, moon, and stars, and we're not to look at our birth sign and how we we're supposed to act this day because we're born under a certain sign. That's a, a different, different uh, concept. That's, that's what Satan has done to it, and is, it kind of stops everybody from actually taking it serious. The sun, moon, and stars. So, I want you to notice here, and I brought this up before. The graves were opened, and the bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection. These bodies came up out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city. This holy city is a, is a uh, picture of um, heaven. And they appeared unto many. So in with what these two were discussing with me, they believe that Lazarus is resurrected and that meal that Jesus has with Lazarus and Mary and Martha is a meal actually in heaven with us. And I thought that was a pretty good uh, thought that they had, and, and they're working on those six days to see if they can narrow it down, but it would be somewhere between Nissan 4 and Nissan 10, which would be March 20th and March 26th. So that'd, that'd be very interesting to see what they come up with on that. I've showed you this before. This is the, the Jewish and the... Uh, Christian calendar put together, you see at the end of March up there at the top, would be Nissan 14. March 30th is Nissan 14. Um, come over here, you can't deny, right here, Nissan 14 is March 30th. I didn't make that happen. That's exactly how it happened when I recognized that the first day of the year is March 17th. That just naturally happened that way. And then I find that on the internet, which I showed you before, how it works out that March 30th is Nissan 14. You see it's in the middle of Nissan right there, Passover. 
and it doesn't change on this dial that somebody made. You can find these things all over the internet, many different uh, examples of it. So it says, Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in the day? They're talking about Lazarus dying. And they're, he's, they're saying that, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy that he died. We're going to assume that the girls, Mary and Martha, uh, left Lazarus two days earlier. And the reason we're going to assume that is because Jesus tarried for two days and then walked two days back to uh, where Lazarus had died. When they left two days before, two days prior, Lazarus was alive. But when they got to Jesus two days later, which was March the 16th, he had already died. Jesus hung around for two days and then walked for two days back. Four days later, Jesus resurrects Lazarus on March the 20th, which is Nisan 4, 10 days before he goes to the cross. Clearly here on the 16th, if you go down to March 16th of 2022, it is the day of equal parts. Are there not 12 hours in the day? This is the only day of the year where the star of Pegasus is seen on the horizon in Jerusalem at 545 in the morning. This is the only day that that works out to be. It is not the equinox like many teach that does not begin the year. The spring equinox does not begin the year. It begins four days earlier on the day that, that uh, Lazarus died. And on the day Lazarus was resurrected would be the equinox, March 20th. This is the square of Pegasus in the northeast sky in Jerusalem. It rises on March 16th every year with the star Algenib appearing on the horizon at 5.45 a.m. just before sunrise. And it is the sign of the last day of the year, ending the winter season. Remember that beautiful passage in the Bible, Come, my love, for winter is ended and spring has begun. Come up hither. And so this is when that would have occurred, on March 16th. And this is also, four days later, this is the day that Lazarus would have died, and four days later, are there not 12 hours in the day, and four days later, uh, resurrected Lazarus. I lost my place. Let's keep going here. This is a very unique scenario that's happening. I tried to do this on Ken Potter, but I didn't have uh, my pictures up uploaded to him fast enough before we started. But I can't find this equal event ever happening in history before. And I posed it in Discord, Data Minutes Discord, and, and even on here. Can we find at any point in history where the sun eclipses Jupiter just as Jupiter enters the water. Um, now, this is an image I have off of star gaze 2 or something, so it could be slightly different than others, but on this one, at any rate, on March the 5th, Jupiter and the Sun enter the water together. You notice back here, Saturn and Mercury has just passed Saturn. Saturn's back there by itself. Here we look again, Mercury is just about to enter the water, Jupiter is just leaving the water, and the Sun has long since led the way past the water, and Saturn's back there in the past again. Another view of this, Jupiter leaving the water, and you have the Sun ahead of it, and Mercury is just about to enter the water. Just another view of Jupiter exiting the water, the Sun up ahead, and Mercury catching up and down there not even in Aquarius yet, it's Satan. He's being left out of all of this. Go into town, find a man with a picture of water, and rent the upper room. On this date, on March the 2nd, we see Mercury and Saturn together. Mercury will report to the sun on the day that Jesus was resurrected. On April the 2nd, Mercury has caught up to the sun, and this is the day that Jesus resurrected on the Enoch timeline. Okay, I wanted to, this is what I was just quoting a second ago. 
Jesus says in this passage, and he sent Peter and John, I said Paul before, but Peter and John, saying, go and prepare us the Passover meal that we may eat. He names them. This is the bride. This is, I believe, the Jews, they don't, uh, this, this group of people, it says he sent forth two of his disciples. He doesn't give any names at all. Okay, this is the other thing that I found here. It says, where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? Okay. This is, and you shall say unto the good man, this is Jesus telling him to ask this question of the man carrying, bearing a picture of water, follow him to the house where he entereth, and he shall say unto the good man of the house, the master saith unto thee, where is the guest chamber where we shall eat the Passover with my disciples? Here it is in Mark. It's all. Almost the same. He has to find a man, but nobody is named in this one. You'll notice over here at the top, it's Peter and John named. It's personal, it's intimate, and it's the bride. Over here, it is Rachel. It is the wife. It is not the bride. Nobody is named, but the question is the same. Where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? Guest chamber? Guest chamber. But in Matthew... I will keep the Passover in your house, in thy house. They're not invited to the uh, guest chamber. We're eating Passover at their house. Remember, the Bible speaks very clearly that the Holy City does not set down on this earth. It sets down on the new earth. We will rule on this earth for a thousand years with a rod of iron with Jesus. We will come to their house. This is their house. This house will be destroyed and a brand new house will be built. In the brand new house, this is where everything that Jesus prepared for us will be set down onto the new earth, not this earth. This earth will be destroyed. Here in Luke, he said, and he said unto them, behold, when ye are entered into the city, there shall a man meet you bearing a picture of water, follow him into the house where he entereth in. Over here, and he setteth unto setteth forth two of his disciples. Again, over here we have Peter and John named. Over here, no nobody named. I guess I just highlighted several different aspects of it, but I just taught all of it at the same time. Go ye into the city, you shall meet a man bear, uh, shall meet a man bearing a pitcher of water, and follow him. And again, over here, I will eat Passover at your house. Where is the guest chamber and where I shall eat the Passover with his disciples, okay? So let's see here. Remember that even though we're trying to figure this out, all 10 brides fell asleep, all 10 brides. That was not, I would liken this to knowing the date. We don't know the date yet. They all fell asleep, but suddenly at midnight, there was a cry made. Now, suddenly they all know the date, but five of them had oil. They had an intimate relationship with Jesus and five of them did not. And they went out to try to find that intimate relationship, but it was too late because it says here, behold, the bridegroom cometh. We know in advance, we're told in advance that the bridegroom is going to come because this cry is made out, how long in advance, we don't know. Is it the, is it the opening of the graves uh, when Lazarus was resurrected on uh, Nissan 4, March 20th? I don't know. This is what we're trying to figure out, but we're narrowing it down every single day. And it says, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out and meet him. And all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish ones said unto the wise, give, give us of your oil. They want some of what we have. They want to be a bride all of a sudden. But no, I'm sorry. It's too late. You had your, your moment, but you were foolish. You were a sleepy church, and you're going to stay. But fear not. You are a saint of the tribulation. You will go through it, but you will be saved. God will protect you. It says, now remember 
therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent if therefore thou shalt not watch i will come upon thee as a thief and thou shalt not know what hour i will come upon thee sounds like a promise to me that if you're watching you're going to know when this is going to happen is it the midnight cry that we're all going to hear is it that we're going to get so close to figuring this out that we'll all be kind of standing around looking up going um we kind of think this is around the right time you know and we'll all be watching we kind of all are watching we're all trying to figure this out so let's see here great mystery i speak unto you before she, oh here it is before she travailed she brought forth before her pain came she was delivered of a man child who have heard of such a thing who has seen such things have you ever heard of that but this is something that uh, that we're looking forward to is is we will be born into heaven uh, before she travails. And remember, the water breaks, and then we believe when the water breaks, and we see that up in the stars happening, the water breaking, we see that happening on um, March the 17th. Jupiter breaks through the water on March the 17th. And there is a period of time after the water breaks before the woman goes into uh, labor. And uh, it wouldn't, obviously, since it took 12 days for Jupiter to go through the water on my uh, star walk, uh, too, that, uh, you know, it might be uh, it might be more time once the, the water breaks. But there's a bunch of information there. Uh, there's like these, I, like I said, these two people that are very uh, in tune with this and they are trying to figure out and there's got to be something in there. Maybe you know something you could give to us to help us out. Um, we know that the first day of the year is always March 17th. Always. It is always Nissan 1. We know for a fact that in the first month and the 14th day that Jesus went to the cross, and that is always March 30th. What we don't know, and we know that four days later, Lazarus was resurrected. We know that four days later, so that is March the 20th. And we know that four days before Jesus went to the cross, he rode into town triumphantly on a donkey while they screamed, Hosanna to the highest, and threw down palm branches at his feet. But there's that six-day gap. That six-day gap that I showed you that uh, we're trying to figure out, we're trying to get to that, an understanding of that six days. When exactly in this did we have this meal um, in between those six days right there? When did we have this meal? Lazarus is resurrected, and the next thing we see is at this meal, Jesus is there, Lazarus is there, Mary and Martha are there. We know that Four days before he rode into town on a donkey, four days before the cross. So there's that six days in there, and I just assigned it. I just put the six days in there. I, I don't know what, where they ate. I'd like to, anybody can work on this and tell me, after Lazarus was resurrected, how long after Lazarus was resurrected did they eat that meal um, there? And that is where I'm looking at myself and I have been for quite some time. I've been looking at April the 2nd. April the 2nd or April the 3rd early in the morning, but April the 2nd is what I'm looking at. But then they came up with this, and they're talking about a good 10 days earlier, and I'm like, hmm, I could go for 10 days earlier. My schedule is open like, uh, like Aaron says over God a minute. I've checked my schedule, and it's wide open for a rapture. It always is. So um, I like the way he says that. Um, my schedule is open too. Anytime I go right now, I, I'm I'm not trying to be right. I'm just trying to figure this out because this this has been a labor of love and I've been working on it for about a year now. And you guys have watched this timeline, this Enoch timeline unfold for about a year, and it's amazing to me every time I get a date how it just folds right there into place after Lazarus was resurrected, before Jesus rode into town on the donkey. Lazarus resurrected March 20th. Jesus rides into town March 26th. Those six days, how long after Lazarus was resurrected did he eat that meal? And that's what they called me about. And that's what they were talking about. And that's what we're trying to figure out. Is it a perfect rapture scenario? 
Yeah, it kind of is. Lazarus is resurrected from the dead. And then there's that meal that we're eating with Lazarus, by the way, and Mary and Martha in that upper room where they found a man carrying a picture of water and they show up in this upper room. And Jesus makes the comment, he will not eat again until he eats it anew with us. <laughs> Is this it? Could this be it within those six days? So the second I hear something from these two, or maybe somebody out there can help me figure out when this meal took place in between those two dates, or maybe I figure it out. The Holy Spirit sends me something. If we can figure out somewhere within those six days when that took place, it's a good point in time for us to look at as to when. And uh, then we can start doing all kinds of, you know, what time did he uh, resurrect Lazarus? What time was that? What time did Jesus ride into town on the donkey? We can start narrowing it down to not only a day, but we might get down to an hour or so. Anyway, Repo Man 64, like, comment, share, and subscribe. And remember, more importantly than any of this, this is fun. This is just fun. We're just trying to figure this out. It's going to happen. We know it is. Um, this ride has been incredible with Dr. Barry Yaw and everything he's done. I'm just amazed by him, like uh, Tony Early and everything, that uh, he's very in tune with his surroundings, and he hears all these things, and he puts things together really interesting. I just love everybody on YouTube. Uh, like I said yesterday, Ken Potter, I hate it, and he said it the day before that with uh, Wackadoodle Samoan. I hate to name one because then I miss 10. And uh, there's so many of you out there that are that are trying to figure this out. And you guys are awesome. And, and uh, I learned so much from everybody. And and uh, we're just going to keep on, keep on keeping on. We're going to try to figure this out together. And so uh, remember, more importantly than anything else, this doesn't matter. If we're going to watch because that's what we do. That's what the Bible told us we would do. It's natural what we're doing um, because of Revelations 3.3 just said it and that's exactly what we are and that's exactly what we will always do but uh, more importantly than anything go to a quiet place by yourself nobody needs to know and you don't need to tell anybody and accept the Lord into your heart if this is accurate we literally have three more weeks yeah three more weeks <laughs> I can hardly wait all right, Repo Man 64, we'll talk with you again. Try to figure this out.